Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else in between. You may be asking yourself, what am I doing today? Well, this weekend. No, no, like, that's not happening. Just turn that off, please. It's time for death call later. You may be asking yourself, Demon, what are you doing? Because this weekend we're supposed to be getting massive gales, storms, uh, thunder and lightning, and the chance of where I'm going today is 98% chance of heavy rain. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've decided, randomly, like you do, I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna stay out in the wilderness. We are going to illegally camp somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. And I may explain, but you'll find out later in the video where I've actually gone and whether we got caught, whether we got into trouble. This is the first time that I'm gonna actually have been wild camping on my own. Obviously I've stayed out in the woods and things like that with uh, four para when I did my basic field training. But being out on your own in the middle of nowhere is a slightly different matter. This is something I haven't done before. Will it be terrifying at night? Sure. Sure it will. You've just not got to let the Blair Witch, the Blair Witch movie or ghosts or demons or wolves or anything else. Wolves? Wolves not bad, you're in England. All right then, foxes and stoats. It's been a long time since I've had a fox. Polish, by the way. So that's what I'm going to do. First of all, we're going to go up towards Malham. If it's not better, it's going to let me through. Thank you very much. On the wrong side of the road. We're going to find somewhere that we can park, go off, and you can come with me on my adventure. I've got some kit. I've got enough food to feed Ethiopia, so we should be fine. Death car enabled. Let's go. <laughs> Get me out of Bradford, please! God, I hate this place! Everywhere you go, it's an absolute dump! Are you mad, demon? You wanna go camping in this? <laughs> Holy crap. Well, you wanna live? This is how to make you feel alive. So I'm here at Malham now, and what I'm going to do is, as many of you may know, I had a Conquering Mountains video, YouTube channel where I used to go hiking and things, and I had nothing but problems with this Garmin, so I'm going to be putting my faith in this thing today. So as I get the rest of my kit ready, it's, a little, it's pissing it down and then it stops, and then it pisses it down and it stops. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the Garmin on so that I can track and put my start off point. If we do get lost out in there and the fog comes down, then we've got the opportunity to be able to find ourselves. And so our adventure begins, out into the wilderness. And I'm actually parked, if you're wondering, if you want to do this trip yourself, I'm actually parked here at the National Park Centre. I'm parked on the main road, and as you can see, here we are in Malham. And we're going to be heading, as part of the first part of this trip, I'm going to be heading up to, is it Scargill Gorge? I think I've got the name right, which is a famous famous area here in the Dales where it's all cracked open but before that we're going to be going up to Janet's Foss which is a beautiful waterfall so that's going to be the first part of our trip One of the things that you need to be aware of when you are wild camping is you really want to kind of time it so that you do your camp about an hour before the last light. That gives you a chance to find somewhere. You want to find somewhere that's fairly sheltered. You don't really want to be out in the middle of nowhere. This is illegal. Not in Scotland it's not, but in the UK, or should I say in England, it is illegal. Now you're only really going to get a slap on the wrist and told to move on. So if you're going to do this, be considerate. Yeah. Seen, you're not going to be disturbing people. There's nowhere near the open paths. Don't leave a mess whatsoever. Leave it as you've got them. No rubbish, no nothing. Be considerate. Yeah? You wish I had my blood. This is ours. So, much akin to Daisy, as the last light starts to come down, we're going to be looking for a place to put a base, or in our case, 
a shelter. See, this is National Trust. Risk of wildfires. Well, we certainly won't be having a fire today. And that's something as a wild camper you should never do. We don't do fires, we do... Well, I've actually brought my own jet boil. But it looks like from this part of the hike onwards, we're actually heading into the forest. Down deep into the woods where the demons, ghouls and ghosts lurk. Oh, but that's refreshing. Probably wasn't the best idea to come out here in jeans and hoodies and bring your kid. Poor thing was bloody piss wet through. Idiot. At this point the rain really really was coming down and I was thinking well even though I've got the majority of my stuff in the backpack in dry sacks which I will show you the full details of all the kit that I actually took out today I thought it might be a good idea to use the inbuilt waterproof casing or the sack that comes with this backpack and again I will cover all the gear and everything else I've got in here just to keep it a little bit drier as we head up towards the gorge. So we, here we are, we made it to the gorge and it is amazing. It's very, very awe-inspiring and this video will not really do it justice for the scale of this thing. The problem I've got now is, is that my GPS is telling me that my next route is I have to climb that. One, I've got about 45 pounds of a kit on my back. Two, it's windy and slippy. And I've got to climb that, you've got to be joking. We've got to find another way around. But it's just not, from a safety point of view, there are other people around, but there's no way I'm going to be able to climb up that. Not a cat in else chance. Yes, I've got my seal skin hat on, because the, the rain was absolutely blasting a second ago. So what we're going to do from here on in, I've got no idea. The GPS is telling me I've got to go up that sheer rock face. Not a cat in else chance, mate. Not a cat in else chance. So I'm going to have to go back and see if I can get up on the top of these hills somehow. But they're absolutely massive. Friggin' hell! Hey, if you want an adventure demon, you're bloody well got one. <laughs> you must be mad, the other said, what are you doing? Camping in this weather, you must be bloody mad. Hey, I feel alive. That's all that matters. Woohoo! At this point, if I remember, I'd climbed about 400 metres. It was extremely tough. The ground on the way up was so wet, and it doesn't actually look that steep here on the actual video, but believe you me, as I say, the GoPro doesn't really show it. That is a long way down, and this stuff was just absolutely sapping. Every time you thought you were at the top, it continued further up.
do this, but hey, oh, it's entertainment. And if anything, something down to the bottom here, at least something can get to in the queen for Jeremy Bean on forehand. At this point it was quite late in the day, we're probably looking at around 4.50 at this point, nearly 5 o'clock. So we've got at least another three hours of daylight and I just kept heading on back towards the same path that I'd already previously taken with the thought to being able to find somewhere to camp and wild camp that wasn't too far from the path if the storm got much, much worse as I heard thunder and lightning storms had been on the horizon coming this way. As I carried on for a little bit, I actually crossed the beck which was on my left hand side and I ended up in this kind of a boggy marshy area and what I'd seen off the main path was there was a tree line over to my left which you'll see on the video in a second. At this point I really was absolutely wet through, there was water in my boots, it was either that or blood and even my socks were absolutely dripping even though all the clothing I had, the montane, the gear and everything else is completely waterproof. I thought that this tree line up here would give me some shelter from the storm and it would be a little bit quiet. As I worked my way up and up and up trying to find some flat level ground I really couldn't find anything anywhere. What this really highlighted to me as we came here and I was setting all the gear up was that the simplicity of setting things up is not as easy as you think even though everything I had organised in the backpack with dry sacks so that everything was completely dry inside the matter of what did I leave in which bag and where was this and where was this piece of kit here and here really did start to become a little bit frustrating now whether this was because I was piss wet through I wasn't cold I was actually very warm but tempers fray and etc etc and even though I'd actually put this tent up at home to have a look at it the actual cover sheet was a little bit confusing at first and the ground was covered in stinging nettles as well. My hands were actually cut to shreds as I was actually putting this tent up. Hey ho, nothing to complain about. If you're out in the middle of nowhere in a gale or a storm and you physically have to camp, then these are the things you've got to put up with. But this is a small tent, this is a one-man tent and organising everything so it didn't get wet while you're putting it up is part of the battle. But this is all experience and learning and the more you do it, the more you'll enjoy it. At this part of the video I'm actually showing you the blow up mattress, no not a blow up doll. We put that in there, it self inflates and you fill it up a little bit at the last. It's not really thick but it actually packs into a completely small tiny area and from here I decided once I'd got everything in I was going to change the clothing but the problem is, as you can see there is the tent set up, the problem is that due to the rain and everything else Really, when you use the jet boil and everything else, you want to be taking this away from your tent because it does can give off certain fumes and carbon oxide if you're not careful. Everything in there, as I mentioned, the biggest mistake I made here was that I didn't bring enough, should I say, 
More clothing really to be able to change, but when it's pissing it down, you can't really get changed in a one-man tent. And lo and behold, another massive mistake that I made was I didn't bring a towel. Why did I not bring a towel? So even though the jacket and everything else that you put at the bottom of your sleeping bag as that dries them out and you put your socks under your sleeping bag, the amount of room in this tent is really quite minimal. So I think in future, if I decide I want to continue going out and doing some wild camping, and it is the weather, intentionally we know the weather is going to be rather bad, then I may consider getting another tent, a bigger one. And also here's another tip on screen. Practice with these things before you get in the field. This is shockingly bad preparation. But hey ho, another learning curve, and I always learn the hard way. Well, I don't know if the GoPro's actually bust, it looks like there's water in the lens. But anyway, as you can see, we have packed up, unfortunately. Uh, and I am actually moving back out. I'm not gonna be staying here overnight. Another wild camper actually saw me from down on the path and he came up and he said uh, it's not advisable for you to stay out tonight. The extreme weather warning is not to be taken lightly. He said there's absolute, like a 10 force gale he was saying is going to be blowing through here. So he said and where you are in this area looks pretty sheltered but he says by the time uh, all the wind in the valleys come through he said it's not advisable. So he says you know I was explaining that this was my first wild camp. And I'm learning the ropes and all this sort of stuff and he was saying that he had a YouTube channel so I've forgotten what you said now but thank you for the advice um, this is all new to me it's a shame I was getting annoyed with the wet and the rain and a lot of things it's brought to light that I need to bring I didn't even bring a towel which is idiotic it's idiotic even on a day like this you would think yes I have brought some spare clothes but when you've actually got your tent up your one-man tent there's not a lot of room in there, so you really do need to prepare and think about having a change of clothes. But I'm absolutely piss wet through. I have got seal skin socks on. And my Solomon 5Ds are waterproof, including these montane trousers, but I'm absolutely drenched. And when I say drenched, I mean absolutely drenched. Now the way for me to get back here to jump across a small stream in a beck go through some marshland here which we're just about to get into as you can see gosh just like dizzy and then i've got about a two and a half mile hike back to the car before it starts to get dark so if you don't hear from me ever again i should be in this bog oh god i just imagine it's going to be like quicksand i'm going to go stink sink down to the bottom How do sheep? How do? Hey, I tell you what, lads. There's not many people who've experienced what I've experienced today. It certainly makes you feel alive. And that's the whole point of it, isn't it? Get away from society, get away from bullshit, Kardashian, social media. It to be big on YouTube, all that wank, it doesn't mean anything, it's all fucking bollocks. And the sooner everybody wakes up and realises that, the happier and the better your life will be. Get out there and just do something different that you've never done before. Try this, try it on a sunny day, try it on a, try it on a beautiful sunny day. Try anything that you've never done before, before you get too old and you just kick the bucket and give up. Look at me, I'm nearly 50. I still want to do these things, get out there and try different things. Hey ho, today's been absolutely miserable. But I've tried it and I've done it and I'm definitely going to come out and welcome when the weather picks up and it's a little bit better. I should have known what to expect. It's rainy, it's miserable. But everything I do, I like to do the extreme. I don't listen to anybody. I want to experience it myself. People said, don't get a sports motorbike. Didn't listen, ended up in hospital pins in hand. This sort of thing. You've got to learn the hard way and you've got to learn these things for yourself. But anyway, this is going to be me signing off because it's not letting up whatsoever. But I can see the car, it's about half a mile away. 
And in a funny way, I've actually really enjoyed myself.